Love them or hate them, almost everyone has a view of taxi drivers. Taxi! I've been stung a few times in the past with taxis and just, I just don't bother with it. I got one home from our work Christmas party at the end of last year and I caught him adding in increments into the fare. Overcharging? Yeah. I'd probably trust a taxi driver more than an Uber driver. What do you think of taxi drivers? Hard working. You know, I think they were dealt a bit of a rough hand when Ubers came in initially, but they also needed to adapt with the times. And while Uber and other app companies have changed how we get around, some taxi veterans like George are still holding on. What made you stick with the taxi industry for more than 50 years? On principle. Because taxi is taxi. George and fellow veteran Ilya have been driving cabs since the 1970s. How much business have you lost because of Uber? At least 50%. At least. We're suffering. We didn't make any money in it. I mean, we make it, but what? When you do 12 hours, you know, that, that money is nothing. So what do you think of Uber now? Oh, right. When you see them on the road? I don't like it. My enemy. <laughs> the taxi industry had a huge win against Uber this week after years of fighting back. A group of 8,000 taxi and hire car operators took the company to court, claiming they lost income when Uber arrived in Australia in 2012. The result today um, I'm very pleased with as it hasn't been done before. Uber settled, agreeing to compensate them at a cost of $272 million. I drove cabs, my dad drove cabs, and my uncle was a London black cab driver. Rod Barton was part of the class action. A former Victorian MP for the Transport Matters Party, he now drives a hire car around Melbourne. It's a touch emotional for us because, you know, the, the, the harm that's been done to uh, taxi and hire car families, you know, jobs have been lost, uh, superannuations have lost, homes have been lost. I'll go up the top and we'll go into the international section. This has been a David and Goliath battle. It's um, what we're talking about is an industry that is made up of new Australians um, who's struggling. They're some of the most vulnerable workers in this country. At the heart of this case is whether Uber played fairly when it entered the market. Taxi drivers argued it didn't because back then there were no regulations to cover ride-sharing apps. Uber did not face the same licensing costs and safety standards as taxis. That gave them a competitive advantage and that meant that we lost uh, business uh, that was important to us uh, over to Uber. Um, it's competition, but it was unfair competition. Uber is saying little about the settlement, but it argues that its services have brought more choice for travellers and helped improve standards. David Tarasenko has driven taxis for nine years, but has a different view about Uber. I think it was really, really good for taxis when they first came in because it forced, you know, it made us realise that there's other competition out there. So with Uber arriving, the industry has had to pull up its socks? That is correct. It's, it's had to pull up its socks. It's forced the industry to clean up its act. But there are still taxi drivers who overcharge, who refuse fares. What do we need to do about them? Oh, look, we've just got to keep trying things until it until it gets um, until it gets fixed. Last month, fans of Taylor Swift in Sydney were reportedly furious after some taxi drivers didn't use their meter and jacked up prices. The New South Wales government now plans to set up a centralised database to regulate bad drivers. Some customers would be thinking, why hasn't the industry cleaned it up after all these years? Uh, Why hasn't the industry cleaned it up? It's still uh, happening. Uh, because uh, if, if uh, uh, where the customer books a cab uh, uh, and something like half of the taxi travel occurs through bookings, uh, it doesn't occur. It's only that hail and rank market and it's only when cabs are, are, 
are scarce and it's only by a small proportion of rogue drivers that think they can get away with it. If the regulator tells us that a driver's misbehaving, uh, then the industry uh, will say goodbye to that, that taxi driver. We don't want that behaviour in the industry. They've tried smaller fines, they've tried bigger fines. It hasn't worked. I think this blacklisting has to work. You know, we need something to get drivers to think, you know, to, to have a, um, um, a system to, you know, um, force them to do the right thing. Do you use Ubers or taxis? Just did. Why? Convenience, it's faster. I prefer Ubers. I feel like they're cleaner. The future of both Ubers and taxis is now up to consumers. We've lost a lot of work, a lot of market share to Uber. If we can provide a really good service, give customers back that customer service that they need, we can definitely win them back.